So yeah, my name is Andy Barnes. I'm the Senior Director of IoT uh, Product Management within the uh, Ruckus organization. Um, I presented uh, at Mobile Field uh, 7, so uh, hopefully you guys are all aware of kind of our IoT ecosystem, which I covered during the, during the last session. So um, what I'm going to do now is, is kind of give you an in insight into where we're going and really focus a little bit on, on what it is that we're trying to build on within our IoT platform. So, you know, if you recall, we, uh, we talked a little bit last time about uh, how we are within our IoT suite, bringing devices through our IoT access points um, and really either by our external radios or by the radios that are built into our APs, we're able to connect these devices into our management platform. So we have our IoT controller and we have our insights platform, which is really an application level data processor. Um, that allows us to actually build applications that solve problems. And really, that's the focus of, of what we're going to talk about today is less about kind of the, the, the plumbing, but really a lot more now about how we can build the solutions that solve different vertical problems and actually, you know, de deliver outcomes for end users. And really, the, the solutions are kind of the next generation. These are really the things that people are interested in because IoT, it's all about the data. So when we look at, you know, when we're developing solutions and, you know, working on how those solutions are going to be integrated into our platform, we actually look at it from a, a very wide range about how are we going to solve things for environmental and social governance. So how are we going to bring in IoT sensor data and solve problems and look at things like energy management? Energy management is very important in, in almost all of our verticals that we play in today. We've all seen that, you know, the cost of energy over the last 12, 18 months spiral out of control. Now, if you're running very large buildings in MDU or education or, um, you know, hospitality, where you have, you know, huge energy consumption bills, if you can get an understanding of how much energy is being used, where it's being used and when it's being used, you can now start to get to grips with that and reduce your, uh, your energy usage. That in turn will help you to reduce your you know, your carbon consumption and your, your uh, overall CO2 footprint. We can use a similar amount of data for things like environmental monitoring. And um, we can look at, you know, things like the health of spaces, the health of our um, maybe students in classrooms. We can monitor things like CO2 levels and we can, you know, utilize that data to improve the learning of students. You know, we all know that as the CO2 level goes up in, uh, in our classrooms, you know, kids start falling asleep, let's be honest. Once you start getting some pretty high CO2 levels, you know, the attention span uh, starts to wander. In, in things like uh, enterprise, though, we look at uh, IoT sensor data for a little bit more interesting things. Maybe space utilization is an example. We've got all these, you know, 200,000 square foot buildings. Is the space in that building being used efficiently? Water management, again, is very important in, in different applications and different verticals. Water pipes burst. We need to be able to find out immediately if there's a burst and not leave it running for two or three days. And then we also have things like occupant health. So, you know, is there, for example, mold growth, growth in buildings? Are there, uh, you know, pieces of, of uh, uh, air quality that we can monitor and improve the building in, in general? All of that feeds into new solution development. So, as I said, really, what we're trying to do here is to understand how we can bring that IoT data into our platform so that we can then solve all of these problems, as I mentioned, for energy, water management, environmental monitoring, you know, space optim optimization, and a whole range of other different uh, vertical-led uh, application uh, solving, app solving problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch over now and actually show you a real live um, uh, system. So, Rajiv, if you can stop sharing now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to walk you through the system. So it's actually very similar to the system you probably saw last year. Um, so what we have here is, is our insights platform that's bringing in real world data from a whole range of different uh, access points and sensors and bringing that data into our platform, just like we did what we did last year. So I'm not going to really cover the platform, but what I'm going to do now is hopefully go over some of the use cases that allow we're able to build on top of that data that's coming into our platform. So you can see here we have a whole range of, of devices that are feeding data in from different locations, and we've mapped those locations into our, our, our IoT ecosystem. 
And what I can do is I can bring up our solution panel here now, and we can actually now start to uh, actually analyze some of that data. So, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look, for example, at, uh, you know, maybe staff safety solution. So, oh, actually, I've just got a panic uh, indication come from one of our members of staff. So I now know that this member of staff is telling that they need help in a particular location. So what we can do is we can go into our staff safety system and I can see in real time who's triggered the event, where they are, if they are moved to a different location, I can actually now follow that person and understand where they are. If they've been moved, I can send a notification to security that that person has moved from one place to a, to a different location. So we have all this data that's coming in. I can also use things like vibration sensors or gunshot detectors or audio detectors. So if there's a, an, an audio sound like a gunshot or maybe there's a, a fight breaking out in a, in a room, we can bring the data in, we can analyze it, we can trigger off of that event and we can send notifications in real time to deal with all of those. So you can see very quickly, uh, all of these events are being captured, logged and captured into the system. And they're also being uh, geolocated. So I know that you know these events happened in a specific location. And I'm able to then, if there's a camera nearby, I'm able to then go in and pull up that event and see actually what happened. Use it maybe for uh, for auditing or for checking, you know, logging. Or if it's something like a vape event, I can use it to to educate that student or that individual, you know, in the in the harm that they're doing to themselves. So the system again is able to bring this data in in real time and then give me visualization of what's going on in you know in a very large environment. So that's kind of a safety application, but then we've also got more space uh, orientated. So what I can do is, for example, I can bring up a, a, an occupancy solution. So the same platform can bring in similar data and then just process, in, process that data slightly differently and use it for, for different uh, analytics and, and analysis. So here I'm able to now bring in motion sensors or occupancy sensors that have been distributed around the building, and I can use those to trigger events and determine whether or not a space has been used, how often it's being used, how many people maybe are in that location, all from very, very simple sensors. So here I have you know, um, very simple motion sensors, maybe Zigbee or Bluetooth, maybe some LoRa. I don't really care what the type of technology is. We can bring that information in, and I can now run instant analytics on a sensor, uh, and the data, the historical data, I can figure out during a workday what the occupancy is of that space, when the peak times and the, the average time and the occupancy of that space is over time, I can look at that over a seven day or over a 24 hour period, or I can dig in in detail and actually break all that information up into you know huge amounts of, of analyzable data. I can run trends and things like that on the data. And so it's really giving it, yep. Um, so you're saying it could be multiple sensors, could be Bluetooth, Zigbee, and you're also mentioning LoRa. Uh, yep. now, now, LoRa typically isn't 2.4, and your APs are. 2.4 radios um, are we using an integrated gateway or are you linking data from another data source so so we can do both so actually we have both uh the ability to work from third-party gateways because generally in a, in a typical for example uh, hospitality you may only need one gateway to cover an entire building so we actually work with third parties to provide law or gateway coverage within those buildings we can also take law data either through a third-party gateway and a local lns or through a third-party cloud partner. So we'd, we support both ways of getting that data. Okay. So once we've got our, an ex other example for we might want to use, for example, might be uh, building management. So here we're actually able to, again, bring that IoT sensor data into our platform. And then we can, again, run analytics. We can do forward prediction on where the trend is running. But more importantly, we can now bring in data from other data sources. So for example, here I can now go in and I can say, right, let's look at how much energy that particular location is using. So let's look at how much electric uh, electricity is being drawn by, for example, an apartment or a room within a, a student accommodation block. So how much current are they drawing? How much power? How much energy are they using? What's their CO2 footprint? I can cross-reference that information against, for example, the CO2 in that room. And I can see, well, you know, there's nobody in the room, but they've left all the heating or the air conditioning running. And I can tell the room's empty because the CO2 level is low. So again, we're able to bring lots of different data sets 
into a single platform and then analyze that, provide insights into what's going on within uh, within that location, building floor or uh, or whatever location we're, we're specifically looking at. We can do similar things with location services. So our APs, we have this Bluetooth radio on board. So now, as, as we did with the panic buttons, we can now do asset tracking. So things like warehousing or hospitality or these different verticals where maybe we want to track goods through a building, maybe track employees or um, you know where members of staff have pressed the panic button. Maybe I want to get a, a real-time view of where these goods are or where this person is. And I maybe want to do that on a floor plan so I can I can click on here and I can bring up a Google Maps. Maybe I want to see a heat map. So let's see you know, where this person has been. I can get a breakdown of where they're spending their time. I can also then just click on a, a single button and I can now heat map all of that information in real time, see where they've been. I can adjust the date range or I can actually then plot the route that they've taken through the building. So, if, for example, I've got a pallet of goods that are coming in and I'm expecting it to travel through the building over the next three days. I can check how far it's got in that process. Did it take a detour? Did it move into a wrong location? I can add things like whitelist and blacklisting to those goods to say, well, actually, that went into an area it's not supposed to versus or it left an area it was supposed to stay in. So, you know, very quickly, we can bring in this this sensor data and build an application on top of that to actually solve problems. And again, we can do things like floor plans. So here I'm showing a Google Maps, but I can also, you know, with a, a simple check, I can say, right, well, show me where that sensor is right now on my floor plan. And, you know, I can see it's over here in this uh, this corner of this meeting room. So it's really about the data and how we actually bring that in and then provide analysis. And one of the key things that we're also doing here is we're building an SDK or solution developers kit that allows people to actually build their own applications and run them on top of our platform. So, you know, you'll see in the next release of our, our insights platform, the SDK will come out and it'll allow developers and communities of, of software developers to now start to build their applications, run them and deploy them on top of our platform and actually then monetize these solutions for themselves. So we're really keen to get an ecosystem of solution providers that can build and run on our platform. Can I just check, Ruckus doesn't actually provide sensors, do they? No, we do not. We do not. No, we okay. do not carry the okay. so These are all that, third that's correct. Yeah, we actually support a very wide range of, of sensor in the ecosystem. It's not really a core business for us. But you know, we, we work with a whole range of different sensor manufacturers worldwide um, yeah, to, to provide those connectivity and, and uh, sensor capabilities. They, can they not also connect to your uh, access points in the USB port, I believe? Um, so, so we have a whole range of different uh, kind of connectivity options. So we have our radios in the access points. So we have both Zigbee and Bluetooth built into the APs. Um, but we also have a USB port where we can expand that radio capability. So today we offer the capabilities for things like plug-in dongles for, for maybe Z-Wave, but that will expand. So going forward, we'll add more radio capabilities as more standards come out and more capabilities. Um, some of our next generation APs also expand beyond just Zigbee and Bluetooth.